I'm going to talk mostly about uh, uh, food and health. And that story, of course, goes way back to Hippocrates and things that were recognized uh, uh, just by clinical intu intuition a long time ago. But the modern era of uh, data science and uh, studies of diet and health really, I think, started with this very famous study, the Seven Countries study by Ansel Keys, uh, that was looking at 14 different populations of about 1,000 men each in seven countries. And probably the most important finding that they had was uh, essentially that rates of heart disease uh, differed about tenfold among the various countries. And that had really not been well documented before by standardized methods. And the obvious question is why? do these rates differ so much among uh, countries? Uh, there's a lot of interest in genetics now, but some relatively simple studies showed definitively that this was not due, these differences were not due to genetic factors because people who live in low incidence areas, like at the lower left, that's uh, Japan, a couple of uh, villages there, but Crete uh, actually had the lowest rates of heart disease. And when those populations moved to the United States, they fairly quickly developed the same rates as the European Americans living in the United States. So that says that the, very definitively that these huge differences were not due to genetic factors. So what is it about the non-genetic factors, which we broadly call environmental factors? And there were some clues from the seven countries study that diet might be important because there was this very strong correlation with saturated fat. But Keyes knew that there were lots of other factors involved, and this didn't prove that saturated fat was the cause of heart disease. He also looked at total fat, and actually that was not related to coronary heart disease because uh, Crete actually had the, the same, about 40% of calories and fat as did the highest risk countries, Finland. But the type of fat, of course, was totally different, that it was dairy fat primarily in Finland and olive oil primarily in Greece. So that was an early clue that fat per se was not the problem, although it hinted that uh, saturated fat might be the problem. But this certainly was a great stimulus to more research on this topic, and I'll come back to some of that. Uh, the same picture was seen for many cancers. These, this is looking at breast cancer rates around the world uh, back in the 1950s and the 1960s. And again, very strong correlation with either total fat or animal fat in the diet. Uh, and again, the migrants from Japan down in the lower left there uh, and other low-risk countries who came to the United States, uh, actually it took them about two generations, but they caught up with the rates of breast cancer of, of European Americans living in the United States. So again, these huge differences are not due to genetic factors. Uh, something about diet and lifestyle. And there were some clues that it might be fat in the diet or animal fat uh, more specifically. But there was certainly the need to do more detailed studies. However, this, this slide was shown over and over again, and, so, and it became repeated so much that there was a general conventional wisdom that fat in the diet was the major cause of heart disease and uh, many cancers, breast cancer included. Uh, so that was that conventional wisdom was reflected in this 1992 food guide pyramid. Probably uh, those of you in my generation remember 1992. This was a big deal. The food pyramid comes out. And the message is very clear that up at the top, you avoid all uh, fat-containing foods, uh, including meat, uh, butter, but even, even oils. Uh, every bit of fat should be out of the diet as much as possible. And therefore, if you don't eat fat, you've got to eat something. And so that means you're inevitably going to eat large amounts of carbohydrates. So even though there was never any evidence that eating a lot of carbohydrate was really good for you, uh, they, we were told to have up to 11 servings of things like potatoes and Wonder Bread and Rice Krispies and bagels uh, as if uh, that made no problem. And then they put potatoes there in the vegetable group. You could have up to 13 servings of starchy foods per day. Uh, that was said to be what was, what was good for us. But there were some red flags that became apparent to me and some others in the late 1980s that this might, this might not be right. Um, this, this was a, what we can call a controlled feeding study where you take just a few dozen volunteers and you more, almost lock them up and you give them different diets and you so you're controlling what they ate. And uh, we can see this is a study comparing 
uh, 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 olive oil with a uh, low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. And on both diets, total cholesterol comes down pretty equally. Actually, a little bit more on the olive oil diet, if anything. Uh, but on, uh, what happens on the high-carbohydrate, low-fat diet, that uh, HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol goes, goes down, and triglycerides go up. And we know that those changes predict more heart disease, not less heart disease. So one would su uh, suspect, on the basis of this evidence, that you'd be better off having the olive oil diet rather than the lower fat, higher carbohydrate diet. And in fact, many other studies have followed up. This has been reproduced many times. And it doesn't matter what type of plant oil, whether it's, it can be soybean oil, canola oil, you get basically the same kind of response uh, as you do with olive oil in uh, this kind of diet this kind of dietary comparison. Uh, but we know that there are many pathways, many other pathways that could link diet with coronary heart disease uh, over on the right. Uh, what I've talked about so far has just been pathways operating through blood lipids, the blood cholesterol and triglycerides. But diet can also act by influencing blood pressure, uh, by uh, uh, looking at uh, a thrombotic tendency, the tendency to form clots in your arteries. Uh, insulin resistance, uh, and oxidative stress, uh, homocysteine levels in your blood uh, inf in by infecting inflammation and also by influencing ventricular irritability and arrhythmias. And that's really important because arrhythmias are how most people die of, of heart disease.